ahead of KO the Kangaroo's launch on the 27th of May, I had the honor of interviewing two people from Tate's Multimedia. If you want to learn more about KO, you're in the right place. Take it away. I'm Kaya Borupko, and uh, I'm the head of studio of Tate Multimedia. I've been here from the early stages of the development of KO. And uh, yeah, so I'm, re uh, I'm responsible for um, for everything, but also a lot of the publishing side of it because we're self-publishing as well. And Johnny? I'm a head of production at Tate, so I've overseen the, the development and the release of the game to be sure that we're all on all platforms at the right time for the 27th of May and we're ready to go basically and we can support the game post launch as well and uh, I'm uh, pretty happy with the results so far. So very happy to see your reactions. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I love the game so far. It's I mean I've I've nearly finished it. I love it. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, it is very cool to see Ko back. Um, but for those who may not know, uh, could you tell me a little bit about Ko the Kangaroo? Yes. So um, Ko the Kangaroo is the three D platformer with <laughs> with uh, uh, over twenty years of history. So we started. Um, back in 2001, I want to say, with the first KO mm, that some people consider quite difficult. But back then, back then it was the kind of an answer, like local answer to what was being played back then, right? And uh, mm, it was a group of friends that wanted to do something on their own, um, just from their interest in games and what was then. Uh, happening on the market and uh, it was actually picked up by uh, big publishers as well so uh, went on uh, to well most known was known uh, dreamcast right and uh, mm, was pretty well known internationally as well as of course mostly here in Poland then um, so which allowed for the franchise to develop further and the second uh, so we had the second uh, episode of the original franchise, K the Kangaroo Round 2. Uh, that was that was a massive success. A massive success, <laughs> I want to say. Well, at least for, for then. Uh, and, uh, and yes, and then we had the third game from the series, the K the Kangaroo uh, Mystery of Volcano. Uh, and that's when the golden era of 3D platformers was kind of fading. So, um, so yeah, so we, uh, that, that third episode of uh, the original trilogy wasn't that well known. Uh, it had a little bit of more limited release. So we stopped doing that as a, as a studio. Uh, we moved to working on some um, some some other titles, also well known, but uh, more like work for hire stuff. And then we moved to again uh, to working on our own games, but um, um, ac action games. So the we developed this whole new franchise, Urban Trial, and thinking about what's next we ran into some uh, some youtube videos uh of ko old ko games so classic 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 ko games so we started digging deeper and uh we realized that there was this movement hashtag bring ko back and uh initially we uh we decided to bring ko round two to digital platform, well, Steam, because that was something that, you know, um, back then, uh, KO wasn't available or, or like, we were even wondering where people will still have it from, right? Because it used to be, uh, it used to be available on many platforms, but nowadays, you know, most people don't own the uh, PlayStation 2 anymore, <laughs> right? So, so yeah, we, we brought it back like this, but then after we've seen the success of that classic game, so to say, on Steam, we we saw that there was a potential to to do something to continue with the franchise that we thought was basically over, and we started working on 
on the new KO. I'm sorry, that was a long story, but it was over 20 years, so you see it needed to down. And uh, well, I don't know what else uh, I can uh, tell you about it. Um, Maybe the first year of uh, incubation about the ideas <laughs> and all these parts. Uh, yeah, that one was. Yes, that one was fun, and it wasn't that easy to to bring it back because. Um, uh -huh. Just one more uh, also interesting fun fact is that, you know, we, we were kind of given hints before uh, of the continuous interest in K.O. the Kangaroo because um, while publishing all those other games that we had, we always kept getting emails to our, you know, like contact emails. And, okay, thank you. That's a nice game. But what about K.O. <laughs> so, or something like, thank you. That's a... Uh, yeah, I liked playing, I don't know, Urban Trial Playground, but what about Teo? <laughs> and so so we did have those hints before. And exactly, so now with all those expectations that we had, we needed to come up with something that um, mm, that is going to be worth the wait, right? And uh, that uh, was interesting because, you know, this community that we had, we had a very strong fan base, but it wouldn't be really enough, uh, I would say, um, investment-wise to only do something like that, right? So we also knew we needed some, we needed to attract new people and we needed to introduce KO to other people as well. So now that was a big question, um, if we should, like, or where, what should we, uh, who should we address uh, the most, right? Then, so we had ideas like, okay, so for all those uh, KO fans, it's been so many years, so maybe KO should be older, right? Mm. So if he's older, then maybe we can also, since it's an evolution of the franchise again, right? So we were thinking, okay, maybe we need to add something, something, uh, improved so we were also thinking on so for example uh putting more emphasis on the combat right so then you have an older ko that is like ko was always a fighter but here he would be um he he also gameplay wise you know it would be much more elaborate so to say yeah we had uh, multiple prototypes a little bit more more or less darker more or less more grown up you know in different ideas and then finally we decided to you know really listen to what the community was saying plus what our team was saying because um our team was made up of um, you know those veterans who were there from with the series from the beginning mm. Mm, but most of the uh, most of the people who worked on it were um you know <laughs> uh, were either ko fans before or in that age so to say so they've been they already had uh, uh, had different inspirations. They already had much more knowledge about like what's now going on in the market. So, combining all of that, we asked we we asked both the community what they were waiting for with some survey on our channel, and uh, internally we organized the game jam, like also looking for ideas. And in the end, what we got from it was uh was that basically kale is a like we mentioned a 3d platformer and this is what it needs to stay and this is also our audience no matter how old no matter where no matter if aware of if they're aware of the series or not or not it's the 3d platformer fans and and that's how we kind of got the ball running we uh, we wanted to, we, we, we knew that we need to modernize it a little bit, but so we did it mostly in terms of visuals and some gameplay as well. Uh, but the visuals were, of course, very important here as well uh, in terms of modernizing. And yes, so this is how, how, how it's, 
the story also, you know, we, we also added a more elaborate story in the background. Mm. So, uh, I'm sorry, that was long again. No, no, <laughs> not so. <laughs> a long process, you know. No, it's interesting you were saying that, you know, you, you tried to uh, change the game a little bit uh, for a more modern era, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, did you, but you, you also, you know, you've heard that people wanted a new KO game because people were messaging you. Did you also know that, because you're working on different genres, that uh, 3D platformers were really, really popular again? Or did that sort of Ah, no, that's, a, that's another very interesting part. And this is a huge disclaimer, okay? So we started working on the new KO three and a half years ago. Okay. You know, so a long time ago. So it was already at the stage where some of the 3D platformers, like in, in the 3D platformers, are back, plus some of the bigger titles, but remastered, you know, so you had the a remastered Crash, you had the remastered Trilogy Spyro, then you had all those new titles like, with totally new franchises like Ukulele and uh, Ahead of Time, I think for the PC it also kind of started this way. So we had those signs, but our our motivation was coming mostly from the inside, so to say. So, so from the um not from the inside so but like internally uh from the interest of ko and from the community plus it was a nice of course it was uh um it was uh nice that there were all the, the, those other titles that they were showing that there are still people who want to play uh 3d platformers but when it really hit the new, uh, surprise the, for us. yeah, I mean, when, when the new crash came, the new ratchet, you know, they were from while we were already working on KO, uh, that that was big for us, and especially the interest that those games still had. Uh, of course, they were huge productions, and they are, you know, they're nothing like we're not comparing ourselves to to them at all, and we're also not aiming to. We're also not aiming to be like them. But it was definitely a sign that those three D platformers were back, so it's a perfect timing to be back as well, because you know that's the thing. We are also back. It's not like we were coming up with something new. So uh, that put us in a very comfortable position where we 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 it made us we we believe now there was still this issue of who are the 3d platformers for nowadays right because back in the original ko games 3d platformers were for everyone there was where the, the most popular genre right then it has <clears throat> you know in, in in the late years it has changed so that you know people were associating 3d platformers what maybe only with Mario games, and then well, mostly for children, you know. So you had uh, mm, so some titles connected to also those big IPs, you know. Those uh, and uh, so so the comeback of Ratchet, the comeback of Crash, the those big titles uh, helped us to realize that there's still like adult audience that is looking into the yeah. Genre. Yeah, I, th I think certainly um, because like 3D platformers were gone for quite a while, there wasn't really an association of wh what kind of audience. But certainly because of games like Crash and how challenging they can be, I think so. Like, oh, it's it's great for kids. You know, they they will enjoy it. But it's still hard, but they'll enjoy it. Maybe just casually completing. But if you really want to go for 100, percent that's that's the the older generation. They go, I love it. But you know, it's it's. I think I think 3D platformers is it's great to see so many return and. And, and new ones uh, flourish, and it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's great to have a new KO. Like it's, it was, it was a really big surprise when, when I first saw that there was a new one like coming. Like you've been teasing it for a while before you revealed the first trailer, um, and it was just like I, I was following that. I was just like, oh wow, okay, this is, this is. I think that actually might have been like one of the things where I was like, I need to, I need to play the KO games, and th there's a new one coming. This is amazing. Like, I need, I need to go back. Um, but no, it's uh, it's it's wonderful. So, talking about the uh, the the originals, what were your favorite things about the uh, previous Ko games? And uh, did any of 
those things inspire you to add them into this version of the game? You go, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was a passion project that you can see, you can feel that in the game. Uh, the team was really dedicated and uh, in terms of inspiration from round two and the previous one, we were always torn to find the right things you want to bring back, like, you know, the neck, for instance, obviously has to be, be there because it's a cosmetic feature, everybody's anticipating that, or idle animations, you know, when he's taking the rope and, and stuff like that, these little details that make uh, the kangaroo a nice uh, mascot character. Uh, obviously, even if we started before the same trilogy and stuff like that, the team grew up with these games. And myself, I'm slightly older, so I grew up with the previous generation of platformers. And Crash was coming at the end of, uh, of my uh, teenagehood, so I won't tell you how. I'm not old, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but that was interesting because everything kind of uh, was an inspiration. I mean, you, you finish the Frozen Mountain, so you can see the slides and uh, all these parts, you know, which uh, we, we provided a big part in, uh, in the Frozen Mountain. So our balance was to first to have a plug and play game which was, uh, you can play for 15 minutes, you can play for two hours, you still have fun. It's not too difficult, but if you want to collect everything, like all the old school platformers, you can do it and you can have fun finding, you know, the runes, finding all the, all the gems and stuff like that. That was for this part. We had the combat, which is always cool and fun. You know, we don't want to make to this too over complicated. And then we had this game designer, which came, uh, who came with a great idea of, hey, what do we do with the gloves? Do we go the traditional route of putting some RPG tech trees and stuff, and then you have, you know, fire one, two, three, four, and we want to like, no, let's do it like the platforming way, keep it simple. And you had this idea of maybe we could have some charges and stuff, and then we can play with them. And then so it added a, a slight puzzle element into the game, which we felt was interesting. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have time to go because it takes quite a lot of thought in terms of game design to implement this type of ideas. So we don't have and we don't want to make the game too puzzly enough because it can be a bit boring afterwards, you know what I mean? It's always a matter of balancing. Uh, but yeah, we, we found this idea, which was great. We kept uh, playing with it for, for months and months, and then we started to implement that in the game. And as well, some other triple I indie games like um, Ukulele, for instance, from Platonic, were a good inspiration for us to say, hey, look, if other indie developers did that amazing games, Maybe we can do something which is good. We knew we had a strong art. We, the art team is fantastic. We knew we, we were going in the right direction in terms of uh, platforming. The most difficult part was, first one was very difficult. Second one was too easy. How do we find the right balance? Ratchet and Clank, too expensive for us. Very <laughs> So very strong. A little bit, just a little. <laughs> Story, a little. 300 people working on it in so many <laughs> games behind, it's amazing. We don't have the budget, what can we do with our own things to, to have variations of gameplay? So inspiration from Crash will come, for instance, you know, the chase when you have the big monkey on this barrel and stuff like that are strong references from Crash, but also from the old cow games. Uh, <laughs> then you have the slides in the Frozen Mountains, which come directly um, into what we were doing before. You know, the slides are something vastly important. And we, we had as well, we knew we could not go with 12 hours gameplay, 15 hours gameplay for that type of game because it's a lot of content to produce for a small size team. So we had to cut some parts which were great in round two. For instance, there was this boat part, you know, where you can... There, there were some parts we did not have time to make fun enough or, you know, some other games came in the meantime and then the gameplay changed a bit or evolved. So it was less relevant than before. So we had to, to do some choices, but for instance, I was a very good example, I was really against putting all these uh, uh, parts where you have the, the ears, you know, attached to these type of, uh, of fillets above you, mm. and then you can move. And in fact, it's super fun to play. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah I really like those. Great, those can... great addition. I was like, don't put them all the time because it will cut all the fun. And they were putting them, putting them. But, the, you know, at this stage, the result was more white boxes and stuff. So it was more difficult to imagine what, uh, what would be in the final game. And yeah, I think they make this good balance of, let's say, vertical gameplay, rhythm, pacing, and uh, references of the old games, and trying to to be modern as well in the approach. Yeah, it's interesting because, like you said, like you know, you uh, didn't include the like the the vehicle levels. Um, I, I was wondering, it, like, what, was that going to be a, a consideration at one point, or were there, were there other it, things? It was you... a big comparison. We we had a pretty uh, pretty advanced. 
uh, prototypes of it and, and we had lots of uh, hard discussions but we wanted as well to uh, we could not uh, in terms of budget go uh, forever <clears throat> and so you have to make some hard choices so we preferred to concentrate on some things we we could repeat in the game and they, they were fun we, we could play a bit more with the platforming elements rotations and make the platforming a bit more difficult but uh, if we had added this type of, uh, of gameplay as well potentially it would have costed far more in terms of time and, and the other parts would not have been as polished so that was a choice we made uh, last year and a half something like that and uh, yeah the idea is really to to tell a journey to the player each level is built by the team to tell a journey uh, to the player so you start a level you, you know you have the global story that's fine but it's more okay if i play a level which is a lava cave for instance i know i start with the lava and i finish in a factory that's pretty cool you know you can see the beginning and the end of the level and you remember that afterwards uh, so that was our approach to all the levels basically mm. no, that's, that's really cool and you uh, you say you're, you're quite a small team how many are there of you in terms of development well, the Oh, on, sorry. Uh, yeah, because the, the size of the team was changing throughout different stages of development, of course. So it was around uh, uh, pl pl uh, 25 to 35 uh, 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 people working on on the game, plus some uh, plus some external um, uh, partners as well. Hmm. So, oh, fair enough. Yes, it's quite small. Uh, oh, yes, yes, totally. And yeah, that's something that we we basically um, we we need to stress because as much as of course we um, everyone knows all the AAA games and everyone kind of gets inspired by them because they set uh, they set the standards for uh, from industry and uh, everyone likes to play them themselves as well. Uh, it's not comparable to our own scope so this is why you know it's uh, uh not only in terms of uh, people involved but also of course in terms of uh, the budget the time well which is connected <laughs> um the technology is something that you would think is um is shared but the way you can use it because of the time you have and because of the specialization everyone has is also limited right so um you know we uh, couldn't afford having one person dedicated to only one very specific small task right um so our our team uh, is much more diverse and everyone is uh, uh, able to do you know multiple things and so so it's uh, it's it's also interesting because on the other hand that helps everyone to have a little bit of a bigger picture right and connect to the game a little bit more and this is much more of an intimate really uh, passion driven pro project more than uh, a big machine you know that yeah. is a really smooth production line and this is why we also you know we had we we uh you know we we've of course had our hiccups on the way like on the, the in the development process and it's not like everything is going so smoothly because we have everything already the whole pipeline figured out so we uh we and the team we are also learning even though we were working on something that you would think <laughs> we we know it was still a learning process and uh it's uh yeah and yeah, a lot of decisions to, to, to make, a lot of sacrifices to make, but also a lot of fun to have. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, it seems like there's, there've been a lot of challenges in um, developing, you know, a classic game for a new generation. And uh, I think that's, it is, it is wonderful that, you know, you've, you've, you've pulled it off and uh, we, we get to in, enjoy it. I mean, it's, there's, there's going to be like, a whole new generation of people who are going to get to experience KO and then there are people who grew up with KO who can't believe that they get to play a new one after yeah. however many years it's it's amazing we um, are very excited to see who is going to be the uh, more harsh one like if the <laughs> who is going to be more harsh on us the new people or the all the fans well, spoilers aside, of course, uh, but do you both have a favorite part of the game that you can't wait to hear people play and talk about? Uh, 
I love, I really love Lava Cave. I, I, I think we didn't have, we did not have time to um, to expand uh, the Lava Caves uh, beyond the, this initial level uh, in terms of art and the way that the, the level was built. But I really like the, the feeling, the environment storytelling of the level and stuff like that. Uh, I have very nice ones in the frozen mountains as well, uh, which I feel are different. Uh, new and then you realize that you can do different things with the gloves so it's interesting and if you'd like a bit more of the challenge i have a i think it's really cool to have all these wells you know all not all of them are, are super super long or super exciting or some of them are, are just here for the reward and stuff i think they provide something a bit different if you want to a bit more challenge some of them are difficult on purpose and um, so yeah basically that would be my uh, my face but okay i i just want to say so without going i i want to say it's worth playing until the end mm. um well i as as i've told you both before <laughs> i just haven't quite got to the very end yet i'm i think i'm like probably right before what you're talking about <laughs> so i was like oh that's that's exciting i'm gonna look forward to playing that tonight um no that's that's great i mean because i say i've been really enjoying it it's it's a lot of fun it it has it is the like the original KO was super hard, it's it's great if you love that kind of thing, but it is super, super hard. Um, and round two is a lot of fun, but it is quite easy in points. And this is a really nice blend. It is it is not super hard, it's not super easy, it is just right. Um, and and like you say, the, the well levels are really just uh, really fun little side uh, places to discover. Like, I, I there has been a couple that I actually didn't discover my first time playing through a level I, I missed. Um, I missed them. It's just like, oh, actually, the uh, the chase level is uh, where I missed the well. Um, I was just like, oh, that's brilliant. That's so well hidden. And and then you know, this the the well is just uh, it's really fun. Like it's 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 so great to have, you know, little challenge segments or or enemy battles thing, or whatever. The fun thing is that I was playing a level uh, at the beginning. I think it was a tutorial level the other day for a specific version. Hmm. And I missed uh, one of the letter letters again, and I was like, how can I still miss some letter? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I finished this game so many times, and uh, I still miss some of them. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's great. It, like, it's, like, uh, there are obviously going to be some players who don't want to go for 100%, and that's totally fair enough. But with yeah. someone like me who loves going for 100% in platformers especially, it's just, like, it's so good to have so many separate collectibles. It's like, okay, right. These ones are not easy to find, but I'm gonna get them all. <laughs> I'm gonna find them, and it's the the reward is just it's very satisfying. It's, it's, it's good to yeah. to hear because one of the um, influences we had was one of the Spider-Man games from Insomniac. You know, you can play the game; it's full open world, but you can finish and platinum the game in 40 hours, for instance. So that's interesting to to have this type of uh, of approach to the games as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but no, I it's... think we, also what we wanted is to, that choice that you're talking about so we we wanted to give something for both the players who just want to casually go through something and just connect but also make it interesting for those who want a little bit more out of it and then for them it can be more uh, you know give that extra challenge so to say so for uh for for their i don't want to say for their own pleasure because that sounds like i guess something I can add? Huh? <laughs> Maybe for, uh, yeah, never mind. Okay. Rewarding. Anyway, so that it's a reward. Well, I, I hope KO is a massive success. Um, and it's, you know, you've, you've clearly been working very hard on it for many years and it's, it's, you know, it's really fun. Um, uh, and let's, uh, you, you probably can't say, uh, but if it were to be a big success, could we be looking at a sequel or? We, ah. You we go. plan to um, we plan to support the game and listen to the community first. I think that the the first goal uh, first goal is we we waited for a lot of time to to rebuild the franchise. To uh, so we we took on board some of the things that the community was saying. Now it's to have a successful launch to see what people love, what people don't like as much, and uh, try to make the best of it. And obviously, it will be uh, linked to the to the success of the game. Uh, to see what we do next, but we we already clearly want to support the game. That's for sure. A post-launch is for sure something we'll do uh, to listen to you because you know you cannot anticipate hundred percent of the bugs and all these things. So something we want to uh, correct. Well, that's great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell the viewers? I think we spoke too much already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I don't even... Well, um, I think um, just again, we, what we want to uh, tell Chris is that we hope they will have fun and uh, that they will be able to relax a little bit and soak in this colorful uh, world of kale that can be. Oh, I really want to. Can I? Can I just say one more thing? Because yeah, I like, that was something else. That was something that we recently heard while talking to one of our partners. They mentioned uh, that Ko feels like a palate cleanser for them. Mm. You know, among all those other things, and yes, and I I thought that was very nice, and I reserved <laughs> the right to uh, to <laughs> to use it. So I'm going to spread it. As I say, I hope it's very successful. Um, I hope that, you know, everyone uh, enjoys it as much as I have, and uh, if not more than I have. Uh, and uh, no, it's, uh, it's it's wonderful to see KO back. Thank you for all the work that you and the rest of the team have uh, put into the game. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you in your interest uh, in, in uh, the game. Yeah, that's perfect. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, subscribe, share the video around. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, so those subscriptions would really mean a lot. Uh, yeah, I hope you're looking forward to KO the Kangaroo. I'm going to have a full playthrough on my channel on launch day, so uh, check that out if you're interested, and maybe put a wish list in and pick it up when the game comes out if you like what you see. But uh, yes, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>